One question that I get asked quite frequently as a child trauma therapist is how does EMDR work with kids? Well, I had that same question too after I finished up my EMDR basic training. I felt really confident about how to use it with my adult clients, but I wasn't quite sure how to use it with my child and teen clients. Well, fast forward through years of countless sessions, tons and tons of consultation hours, many, many books and trainings that I've taken, and looking through journal articles, sifting through the research, and you'll find me now. Hi, I'm Jackie Flynn. I'm an Andrea approved consultant, a registered play therapist, the founder of EMDR and play therapy integration support, and the creator of Eight Phases of EMDR with Children and Adolescents Integrating Play Therapy Techniques course. In this five-day experiential course, I teach EMDR trained clinicians how to integrate play therapy techniques into all eight phases of EMDR therapy with their clients regardless of age with fidelity. We start off with a fidelity checklist that is derived directly from the injury and definition to make sure that we're doing it correctly. When a clinician registers for the course, I send them out a therapeutic toy kit. And in that kit, it has all the supplies that they need, not only for the experiential portion of the therapy, but something that they can use with their clients following the training to really strengthen the learning and increase that probability that they're actually going to use it after the training. They also get a digital supply kit so they can do EMDR with their child and teen clients virtually. We practice that all throughout the training. So we start off with learning. A lot of times people will come to this training and they haven't used EMDR in a long time because they weren't able to apply it with their kid clients. So we go through each piece of EMDR to make sure they're doing it with fidelity and then we may see demonstrations, we may do role plays, we may talk about how that looks with the population that they work with, and then we do some supported experiential with it. It is amazing to see these clinicians in the practicum. By the time the training's over, they know how to do it with their kid clients. In phase one, the history taking, I teach clinicians how to gather information from a multitude of sources, including the client. So we may use sand tray therapy, we may use the expressive arts materials, we may use play to really gather that information to get a good solid history with the client. In phase two, I teach clinicians to do a solid preparation phase with the clients. Our children clients are not miniature adults. Their brains aren't even fully developed until their early 20s. So we may need to build up their adaptive information. We may need to increase their resources. We need to go far beyond where the calm place, the container, and the butterfly hug can take us. When our clients come to us struggling, we need to make sure that they're prepared to be able to go through the rest of the therapy. In phase three, the assessment phase, I teach clinicians how to do a solid assessment, how to identify the target through the play, how to create the image, how to really kind of extract those emotions, remember name entertainment, to really kind of help the uh, child to identify the actual emotional literacy that goes with that, and where it's represented in the body, where they feel that activation. So we teach kids how to really kind of recognize those somatic sensations. I created a book um, in my body, I feel, a story about the felt sense of emotions to really support this phase. A lot of times when you ask kids to scan their body, I remember in the beginning I was like, scan your body. I like you to just notice anywhere you feel any tide, any tense, any unusual sensations. And they look at me like, what did she say? So at that time I reached out to a graphic designer and I really um, needed a kid-friendly body scan. So I had one of those created and kids get it. It really works. So we use that and we use the book and it really helps them know where they are actually feeling those emotions in their body. And also in phase three, we explore how to really 
kind of elicit those negative and positive cognitions and how to represent that in a play-based way and how to measure the subjective unit of distress and validity of cognition in a way that's not really reliant of, on words. For phase four, the desensitization phase, I teach clinicians how to really uh, come up with creative ways to do bilateral stimulation. Many of the, our kid clients may struggle with sensory issues. They may not want to hold the buzzers. They may not want to move their eyes and sit on the couch really still. So we need to come up with some playful approaches to really kind of desensitize that, to reduce the emotionality of the target and to get that sud down low enough, whether it's a zero or something that's ecologically valid, so that then we could proceed to phase five. Now in phase five, the reprocessing stage, we really kind of look at how to install that positive cognition and to see if the positive cognition is even the same as it was before and how to come up with one that applies at that moment and how to strengthen that in a way that's not only through words but it's body based so it can really kind of stick with them and help to influence their life in a positive way all through the lens of play. In phase six, we really use playful ways to do that body scan. By, time, by the time they get to that point, the child is very aware of the somatic presentations in their body and we help to kind of lower those down. I think of them as like the dust bunnies, anything that's left over um, from the reprocessing, we help to reduce that so that we can close out the session in phase seven. Now in phase seven, we learn about playful ways to close out the session. This is one of my favorite phases out of the entire therapy. We are blowing bubbles, we're playing with balloons, we're learning ways to help the child just bring themselves back to their green zone, to attain that emotional equilibrium because when they leave a session, we don't want them to leave dysregulated. We want them to feel calm. We want them to feel um, regulated and connected with themselves and others. So we make sure that the phase seven is nice and solid. Now one thing that's really important too is a solid phase eight. What we know is that the processing continues as they go through their week, as they sleep, as they go to school, as they do whatever they do in between the sessions. So when they come back to us, how do we assess if there's any activation still remaining on that target? Well, we can do that through play therapy, so it's super exciting. Well, if this sounds like something that you could use, if you need some practical application knowledge of how to actually use EMDR with effectiveness, with fidelity with your kid clients, I invite you to join us in the eight phases of EMDR with children and adolescents integrating play therapy techniques. Again, I'm Jackie Flynn, and you can find the registration right below this video. All right, take care. Bye.